Hello, and happy Tuesday. Yeah, I had to think about it. It's like we just made a video. But anyways, hello everybody, and sorry, I just wanted to hop on and make a more summarize. <coughs> oh, even as I say that. Let's see, it's 8.03. And then da -da 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 -da. All right. Eight thirty. It's twenty seven. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so close enough and didn't want to hold up too much time doing the thing. And yeah, again, once I edit, I'll edit it out. But basically, I really liked where I was going with that last video, but I also like where I was doing half an hour segments because it feels like it's easier like to watch them and stuff and I'm watching them again. So here's for that. Apologies for the last one. If you enjoy the hour long ones and create but this is for the ones that would prefer if I kept things shorter and simpler. So, um, including myself, because I mean, I, I enjoy the half hour ones a little bit better just because then I have to start and stop and then I leave a tab open and then it's like, yeah, I'm trying to be better about that. So anyways, in, in, in light of that, we're going to try to do a half hour one. But basically the idea of the last <clears throat> musings was, uh, well, people problem solving and understanding uh, let's see. That's understanding certain factors that contribute to how people act towards you and how you act towards people. <coughs> Sorry, that's not the best way to put it, but it's basically like your reactionary behavior and your initial behavior in any given situation is based off of your environment, your past environment, and everything that's happened to you, from you, like anything that you remember at the time, and so it could be affected by how much food you ate that day, so how well you're thinking, or you know, or if you're distracted by being hungry, then maybe you're not thinking as well. And that's even pretty vague to put it. Like you could specifically say, oh, you're distracted by thinking, so then you feel like you're being interrupted by someone trying to talk to you, and so then you're already a little bit more angry or hangry <laughs> when reacting to somebody. And so, and these are the things that we, you know, we find it easier. Easier said than understood, you know, easier said than done, but definitely easier said than understood. Um, actually, that is kind of like a fun little, I fell through that <laughs> a couple videos ago, but, and that was accidental. I was just kind of, in fact, let's go ahead and just put something without taking too much time, just kind of you know, like fix the thing. It was funny, but it doesn't need to keep happening. So anyways, uh, I don't know, behavioral, and then also, what taught you and trained you? So that's the other thing, like, and that's why it's generational, because like my generation had Adam Sandler movies, and we sat there and watched like an hour and a half to two and a half hours. Well, no, I don't think they ever got to like two and a half. We would like know if it was like that long, but um, we would watch an hour and a half of a video, but we would carve out like part of our day to do it. Like we would all gather around the TV and like, you know, I'm just kidding. It wasn't always like that. But even like when I got a TV in my room, which I had to work hard for and pay for, and then I got my own little TV. And so then I could, and then I had to get a, well, let's see. I think I had a regular Xbox. I honestly can't remember when that was. I know I had one, but I think I got the GameCube first, but I couldn't play DVDs on that. So I think I actually had an external DVD player that I later gave to my mom or something. Anyways, my point is, even in my lifetime, we had completely different media that trained us, that taught us things, that exposed us to things, that even sold us ideas and stuff. Because at the end of the day, it could be seen like that one way, but also it could just be seen as providing. So I don't know. It's, I would like to get to the point where we move away from you know, so much, so much focus on the cash or the reward, like, you know, and that ties back to Maslow's hierarchy of need and substance abuse, because if we don't think that our own needs are met, then we continue to try to seek out meeting those needs. And sometimes we take shortcuts, which include, well, things like stealing or something like Jean Valjean. We talked about that a bit in the last episode in Les Mis, like, um, oh yeah. And why I just keep wondering about all this stuff, because I remember so much random stuff and it's it's like mostly useless until I make something. Anyways, Jean Valjean stole some bread to feed his family. I'm pretty sure was what the deal was. So <clears throat> right there, we have like a general understanding of like, oh, okay, I could see that. Like, you know, anybody watching that play would be like, oh, well, yeah, he's trying to feed his. Wait a minute, you just agreed to breaking the law. Like, you know, okay, so 
you should go about it the right way. Don't be a vigilante. Well, that's easier said than done. And that's the whole point of it is like, well, no, Jean Valjean had to go feed his family. They're starving. They're dying. Like, it's a bad time. Food's scarce. Like, poverty and death are rampant. Like, you know, definitely not what we have today. And that's my point is like, um, what used to be the case might not be now. And that's why we need to start kind of shoring up our business, our you know, our way, systems, our way of doing things and try to optimize and be like, do we really need all this? And you'll, you know, smack is that Mojang telling me, don't tell me that capitalism is awesome. Everybody buy, buy, sell, sell. I'm just kidding. And I've already paid way out the nose to Mojang and I continue to, and now I guess it's Microsoft, um, which also same. I bought so many computers and so many Microsoft licenses, like, phew. So anyways, not justifying anything like, you know, I even had to do some research uh, trying to pull a license off of one machine. And they are um, machine specific, most of them. And that's why they're cheaper. Sorry, just to clarify that real quick. Your, your Microsoft, uh, your Windows license, if, it, if you got it with a computer, that's because they sold it at a discount to be packaged with a computer because it's a mutually beneficial industry. Like Windows sells more copies of Windows if more computers sell more computers. Like it's just like they go hand in hand with that. So they're going to take a loss at what they they value their product at, and you still get the same license, but it's only for that computer. So you're actually paying anyway. So, <clears throat> and then I'm over here trying to figure out how to make Raspberry Pis and give them out to people for free and make it viable to where they don't have to spend anything on a computer and they can just focus on paying rent or you know feeding their kids or any of that other stuff you know the things that we kind of like to do sorry i know i just stood there for a sec i had an itch on my arm <laughs> anyways um my point being is like these are not these are not new concepts we've known about trying to you know help out the jean valjeans of time past and then we're like okay well, let's fix the laws like or let's let's fix his, his environment like you know some people would argue, oh, go to the soup kitchen, you bum. But then it's like, and maybe they say that because they don't have the time or the effort or the energy, which used to be costly. Now, to communicate an idea like that, it's boom. You watch a YouTube video. You know, boom. All it takes is like someone with leverage picks up on an idea, like Mr. Beast or Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or literally any of the billionaires that we have in the world. Or, yeah, someone that I don't even know picks up on these ideas, and then they go do it. Like, watch, like some billionaire would just go buy enough computers for all of Africa. Boom. Actually, Elon Musk would have some vested interest being from South Africa, I would, I would wager. And that's assuming I remember it was South Africa. I can't remember. I know he was a citizen. I don't know. It, it's not important. Like, my whole point is, like, I made the immigration video on how much I don't care about if people want to be here and work hard, then let them come. Like, that's my opinion. And you got to let them know, be like, hey, it's hard work living here. I mean, this ain't no free ride. We all working out here. Except the ones that aren't. I mean, it's like, okay, so sorry, not those. So if you think you can go to Hollywood and sing, but most likely you're going to end up, you know, picking our produce or doing the things that we're not capable of doing. And it's not through any fault of our own. It's just that we're more caught up trying to succeed and get that American dream, like own our own house, have a picket fence, have a car or two, have a few kids, have a wife, have a husband, whatever. Like, okay, sorry, that's not the, like, the American dream, you know, if it's like two of each either, but um, just kidding. We're in Colorado here. We're in a purple state. My governor's um, a happily married gay man, like, you know, and these are my people. These are my heroes. And my pastor, when I wasn't, I thought she was, a, I'm so sorry. I thought she was a lesbian. She's not. She's married. I made that mistake. But see, I assumed she was because she kept her hair short. I never saw her husband or her wife, and I just, just kind of assumed. And, and that was how little I cared because I was like, hey, she makes great points every Sunday. Like, I, you know, the ones that I did listen to, honestly, I learned most of my religious stuff in Sunday school. And that's why, I, you know, because I drilled the Sunday school teachers so hard. Like, wait a minute, why? And it wasn't just me. It was the people with me. Don't get me wrong. It's like not, it's not something unique to me. It's like given the right environment, kids will start asking questions. And when kids start asking too many questions, and because we had, you know, the early forms of technology, we had TVs in every household. Like, so you got to think about that. I mean, granted, they probably had a TV in their house eventually, maybe, or it was like one big box of wood with like, you know, the screen. And even when I was a kid, it was still a giant box that, oh, let's see, I'm more likely to want the pumpkins. <laughs> Anyways, um, my point being is like the, the transmission of ideas and the ability to process thought 
wasn't necessary, so they didn't learn and they weren't able to learn how to process thought this quickly. And so that's my point about reducing friction when working with other people that, especially from like, you know, if they're older, like and any of these, don't make assumptions. Like, you know, and you don't have to, and don't make comments either, because it doesn't matter. The scalable way to handle that in the safest way is just, okay, I can acknowledge that, or well, first off, you listen to them, and like, you're having a problem, and you know, and uh, there's an obvious thing, like you're older than me. So, okay, so, and knowing what I've had problems with, that's why it's easy for me to relate, because I've had so many tech problems that aren't even issues now. Like, you don't smack your TV to fix it, like, Oh, you you would never smack a smart TV if it started breaking. Like that's how, I mean, I've seen I've seen YouTube videos. See, I've seen media where people break flat screen TVs just by the simplest things. Animals. I've seen a cat break a TV, but then at the same time, oh, better go to Walmart and get another one or Target or you know pick your pleasure or your poison. Like you can go to the store and get a brand new TV for like a couple hundred bucks. You can get a really nice TV for you know like a couple thousand bucks. But again. <clears throat> in my lifetime, it used to be you'd spend a couple thousand dollars, or at least a thousand, and back when like a thousand was a lot more, but um, on a big screen TV that would fill the entire corner of the room, or this, actually a side of a room. Like it was a wall, like how big those big screen TVs were. And, and I, my friend's family had one, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, I was pretty jealous, but it was like, and, there's, and that's not a, nothing on them. Like, they can't. They couldn't do anything about how my family was a little poor off, and you know. And that's just the the investment of skills, because my parents invested in mining skills um, to go work in the mines up in Leadville, and they did really good. Oh, look, we do have some rails. Oh, let's go do that then. Um, anyways, and we'll get way sidetracked. We're at, okay. We're doing pretty good for a nice, concise, thirty-minute version of what we did in the last one, but. Um, even as I'm saying that, like, I don't know why I have all that, but whatever. Let's just go. Oh, and there's the llama. <laughs> That's right. That was going to be a short. I accidentally trapped a llama. We're actually going to leave the llama there. Sorry. That, that seems a little... Yeah. <laughs> like, don't do that. Oh, wait. Here. How about this? <laughs> we'll give you a ride. Have fun, llama. That is so cool. Ah. So that was an accident because I bailed on the minecart. And I guess a minecart in motion has the ability to pick up an animal. And now I know that. That seems like obvious in hindsight. I kind of feel like that's a thing because I've used that. And that's how I got the villagers from the village over to here is I had to basically kidnap them with a minecart. Yeah, this game is not humane. It doesn't claim to be. It's very fictional, so... Like, you don't just run around and punch. Unless you're in South Park and you're Randy Marsh, Marsh, then you do punch trees. That's why I love South Park so much, because it's like, it says what we're all thinking. Like, oh, okay. But anyways, <clears throat> the point of all that is, is uh, uh, what I basically ranted on the entire hour last time. Actually, that was what I was trying to... Uh, you know what, let's just, let's actually just keep harvesting crops. We, we need a place for all this, though. Like, this is my project uh, chest, container, whatever. This is where I usually put things when I'm trying to... Yeah. So I can even take some of this. And a couple more. Actually, no, no. Leave the stone. That, that, that. Whew. Whoops. No, you need those, because if I do on the maps... Anyways, so... And that's why it took a whole hour, is because I kept running and doing some of that. So basically, my point is, different perspectives, different um, environments, different factors will contribute to a person's behavior. And that's important to just remember. Like, it doesn't have to be, well, <coughs> to a lot of people that's going to seem obvious. But then until you actually, like, really see it from the correct angle, it's not truly obvious. Like, then you'll have an aha moment, oh, hopefully, and just be able to be like, oh, okay, so I see either more clearly what he was saying, or even a different thing that he could have been saying, but maybe not. I mean, maybe you inferred a false positive that actually makes sense, and that's fine. Like, that, no matter how you got there, as long as it wasn't illegal or immoral, I mean, 
and we we've soapboxed about that too like the morality and legality like even in what was that yeah jean valjean stealing a loaf of bread well you don't have to do that nowadays because we have the food bank and i know because i i did i used the food bank when i was in college and like dirt poor and i was on the pell grant and yeah and i was drinking so then i only went like once Actually, come to think of it, I think I just went the one time, and I was so embarrassed to do it. I just like I, I think I sucked it up and I asked for more money from the ma, like, uh, because uh, yeah, but I know it exists. I know it's there. I think it was also partly because of like I was standing there next to people that were clearly in more need, but then some that not. I mean, like you could, again, you can't judge a book by their cover all the way, but you can get an idea. But that's not fair, and you should still keep an open mind just as a scalable way to approach interacting with people. There you go. So that's the roundabout whole point of all that. Let's see, how much room do I have? Yeah, I can just keep. So. And I, I honestly think that the younger generations are already understanding this better than we did because they've been born with tech, raised with tech. Like, they're already used to understanding things that you know, milliseconds to our seconds or our, our one Mississippi and now they're processing things just like lightning's fast, so and that's fine I mean, we, we can't be bitter about that like, oh, we might be for a while but at the same time, as long as we just acknowledge it, and as long as younger generations acknowledge it too, because it, that's a two way street because, um, oh, I can't tell you one thing I've noticed is like a lot of people are well, first, they're embarrassed that they're having a problem with tech. And that's, like, the biggest thing. It's just, like, no, don't be embarrassed. Like, this is it's just completely natural. Like, I get paid good money just to fix these problems all day. Like, this is, I mean, there is enough of And something that was put to me at one of the places I worked at, they told me, well, IT is an expense. You don't actually produce anything. Well, it's like, well, that's true, but ouch, first of all. And then second of all, like, so that's why they didn't want to, like, you know, the pay wasn't higher or whatever. And, like... And it made sense, like it totally makes sense, and I think that's why they wanted to start doing the um, the ACT degree. I, I, w I really should look at when they did that because that's a hybrid degree of computer science and business. And I thought, I mean, I still think to this day that one of the main reasons that they had that was so people can understand the logistics of okay, I cost a lot of money. I need to make this software right, or at least we need to get it right to where we're not wasting a bunch of money. And only because, and it probably didn't take long for like the entire industry to realize, oh wait, we just threw away like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars when we didn't need this development team or we couldn't do this um, project with this development team, and then the business is gone and people's jobs and all that. Like, and that's why I, I said I don't know if that was the last video of this one, but let's let's say it again. This one just to be sure. Like when you rob a bank. You might think it's a faceless entity, but you're actually robbing like potential jobs for people and potential, you know, this and that. It's not all Tuppins and Mary Poppins, like where we think the bank is always evil. Well, yes, there are some definitely evil seeming practices, but even that is like they're beholden to shareholders. And so even that, not justifying the behavior, but it kind of. See, there's another pumpkin. So I'm like spot on. But that justifies, or that doesn't justify the behavior, but that explains the behavior. <coughs> Whew. Sorry, got it out. But, and as long as we take everything with a grain of salt and just kind of, not relax, but just breathe, take a sec, compose, and then go. And be able to stop, pivot, reassess, all of that good stuff. I mean, because we are, and we're slowly becoming more capable. And that's the other thing to know, is every last person is capable of doing this stuff. It just takes an understanding. And it takes some empowerment, too. And see, that's the thing. is like The empowerment is like the elbow grease. Like you'd say in some, like, I used to work in restaurants. Like, oh, go in and scrub this down. you got to use a bunch of elbow grease. Well, it's also kind of like, actually just kind of like grease reducing the friction. All right, that's a horrible analogy in this situation. But empowerment reduces the friction to where they're able to do it themselves. And really, that's what they'd rather do. I mean, and, and that's, the, that's the bad thing. Because I, I constantly try to tell people, like, it's not a problem to me. Like, this is, it's okay. Like, this time is okay for this. And, like, you know, and, and granted, I kind of do go along with some people, but that's because I also don't want to do half majors. I don't want to leave something half done 
And it really does take, you know, just a couple of hours and then it's like, okay. And then they'll, you know, oftentimes they'll be empowered to like start doing things. And it's not that they're not trying to. And that's the other thing, mind you. Like I can see the logs. I can see whenever they try things, like trying to set up their accounts and stuff. And so I know that they're trying. And it's like, and that's another reason. And I don't want to tell people that. Be like, oh, yeah, I can see everything you're doing. Like, because that's a little bit off-putting, you know, because there are some people that are still very skeptical about the surveillance aspect of tech. Whereas I've, I know enough about tech to feel comfortable to where, yes, I'm bothered by it, but at the same time, like, it's ultimately not going to be... Like, how do I put this? <laughs> Without sounding like a sci-fi sci horror movie, be like, oh, this sounds exactly like the movie's like, oh, just play along, eat the soil and greens, like, follow that. No, it's not like that. It's because we're all people, and at the end of the day, even the people watching the people don't want to be watching the people like that. And so they would rather the problems just stop happening. Hence why, and this is going to be really creepy if I did ever come out as like a secret agent or something, because it's like, ooh, like, you know, I was, I was part of the New World Order this whole time. Like, <laughs> and now that's going to be a meme, like, oh, no, if it ever gets big. But my point being is, uh, like, you got to imagine, you got to understand that everything is a reaction or an interaction from a person. And this person did this based on their experience of life, their hardships, their, their wins, their successes, their downfalls, every single last aspect of their memory, everything in their brain, which is also why it's co so crazy thinking that Elon's gotten his brain chips coming out soon. Like, yeah. <laughs> like how do you want to like really fix somebody? How do you really want to screw somebody up? Like, oh my gosh, the potential for torture is too much to trust any one person to like be the only person watching that. So... You know, and again, that comes with instant communication and accountability. We can track all our, like, and I say this, like, I even know family members that track each other because it's kind of like the Apple crew, which I'm not a part of. I don't, I can't, not that I can't afford Apple. It's just like, I'm already, I'm vested in the Googles and I love a lot. Of, I mean, I am a team Google, sorry. <laughs> all of these things that you got to be like, well, no, what I mean by this and, uh. Let me back it up a bit. We're all people, and we all would rather just fix our own problems because the unfortunate aspect of being a burden on other people, whether it's real or inferred, <coughs> you might think that, you know, and, and, and no matter how bad someone can tell you, and the other thing is, and this is one thing, so if you're going to get into tech, and this is very important, and I'm going to put that in... Um, put it in the jam board for the career advice for IT, you need to assume that someone can be listening at all times. And I say that because I've had several IT coworkers um, talk, speak ill about someone. And it comes off as like, oh, teehee. I mean, and it might be just like a harmful thing. And, and I do it too sometimes. It's just like, or I have, and that's like those cringe moments. I want to say I've been careful, but I mean, again, to be really scalable about that, I can't say for a definitive, ah, let's see. Now we're talking about melons. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll also do that. Okay. First grab these. Oh yeah, because the axe is especially getting down there. Ooh, you know what? No, we're not even going to do that. We're going to heal up the axe while we, we what, probably finish up this episode. Yeah, like seven minutes. Um, anyways. My point being is um, we need to be easier on each other and we need to be careful with what we say. Like, don't, sto don't throw stones in glass houses. And basically, like, I grew up in a small town community and I've come to the city and honestly, I have noticed that it's gotten a little bit more relaxed because I've kind of adjusted. Not saying that's like a good thing or justifying it, but and I'm still trying to work on it all the time. At the same time, though, um, let's see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We can put those in the... Yeah, let's put all those in the travel thing, even though I was trying to, like, put those back at the map area, but whatever. Yeah, let's do all that. Why not? Um, anyways, I try to be careful, but you can only be so careful so much. But, so, and that's why, like, I try to leave things in ways that it's not going to bite me down there. Oh, we got the llama. That's right. Um, actually, you know what? This is fun. I, I think the llama's having fun. We're going we're gonna to walk it. We're going to push the llama. Anyways, um, I, try to, I try to act in ways that I don't have to do a lot of maintaining them further down the road. So if it takes me a couple extra seconds to put something back all the way, or if I know, especially if I know something's going to fall, like, 
you know, they, they kind of joke about <clears throat> like married couples like leaving awkwardly like positioned dishes in the ca- ca- cavern, cabinets, cupboards, whatever. Um, the cupboard knits. Bye, Llama. Have fun. Oh, that's got to be, uh, that is. Having the time of his or her life. <laughs> their life. They're having the time of their lives. There you go. See? See how easy that is? Like, and I do that at work, too. If I don't know if it's a he or she, I'm just like, or, you know, anything in between. I'll just be like, they. Boom. And not try to minimize it to that. I'm just trying to explain. Like, it is the easier way. I've had people say that for whatever reason, that's just really hard for them to grasp. And, and actually, even saying it like that, the whole point of what I've been talking about is we need to understand that people, it's... Not that they're built different, but they kind of are now. Like they're trained different. They're grown. They grow up differently. Like they have different concerns, cares, worries. Like everything's different. The game has changed, and it's constantly changing. Oh my gosh, we got a parrot. Are you? Are you gonna? Are you one of mine? No. You can be. Can't mind being all possessive of an animal, but actually, it is. It's a game. So. Just actually no. That's fine. We'll keep them wild. <laughs> Even that, like, are they judging me? Like, huh, huh, huh. They're not, but it is computer code, underlying computer code, unless someone is actively. Anyways, I digress. Um, my point being is, people were trained differently, and and the tools were different too, mind you. Like uh, typewriters, keyboards, like you know these things. College life was different. Higher education was different. Now, you know, everybody's got like a computer in their house easily. And, well, and if they don't, I'm I'm doing several projects. Oh yeah, oh, and I saw the note from the CEO of Red Key USB, and it sounded like word for word what I said in the, like the advice. I mean, it, it's I know it's not just me saying this stuff because like I know I actually I personally know a lot of people that are excited in the tech careers like or in the tech field about stuff like that even just like the idea of doing it. And also there's entire businesses about backing up and replication, which is, ah, that's kind of awkward too, but anyways, no, as a, sorry, let me back up. <clears throat> there are entire school projects at CSU in certain classes focusing on the dangers of recycling e-waste. And that is what um, that one article was saying, oh, there's the alarm for that, and I still have three minutes, two minutes. All right, so anyways. Um, and I was reading an article about the dangers of donating technology to other countries is if it's not good technology and if they don't have a way to process it, then it just becomes hazardous trash. And, and that's, that's important too. Like I was like, Oh, like I, I pumped the brakes on. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I was going to go full blown, like trying to, of course, check the laws, you know, check with the local port authorities and the governments and all that. Like, you know, what can I bring? Like, can I donate this? Is this going to be okay? Like, you know, anyways. And there are ways too. So that just means that you need to be more careful about what you do. And with like something like Red Key USB, I know I, I do sound like a spokesperson for it. It's like it's so true. It's it's easy. It's a flash drive, and like you can wipe a computer, and you can know that it's wiped to Department of Defense standards. That's the key important thing. Is like because you can wipe things before. And do you really know? And honestly, I don't even trust myself unless I see for myself, like doing some actual digital forensics. And I started to learn that but only a basic level, so I would still need to practice it. Um, so I'd want, I'd want to see someone else do it, and I actually already know somebody that I want to kind of ask. And in fact, I still haven't done that. Oh, shoot. I should write that down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And I know we've got two minutes, but this could, be, this could be something. So ask. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Okay, cool. So anyways, the whole point of that is is... Different environments cause different skills and different levels of, and everybody wants to fix their own stuff. And we got to get them to the point where, and patiently get them to that point where they feel good enough to start doing it themselves. And then also something that else that goes really far in IT is just letting them know that you're there for them. So even if they do have questions, you're right there. And just having that safety net will often empower a person enough to figure it out themselves or figure out a workaround or something. Because, I mean, I've even, I do workarounds all the time for my own stuff in my own life. Like, I'm not saying I'm a, I, I'm no saint. There you go. I'll say it right now. Like, I don't have the best tech of my own self or the best security or the best, you know, all that. Like, I try to do the best I can. But at the end of the day, I'm a person too. So my point being is once somebody gets 
like feels comfortable doing something with tech, then they'll start feeling more comfortable about exploring with it, and then they'll learn, and then they'll find something that works for them or not, and then they can ask again. But at least as long as they can ask again, then it's all good. So all right, that's 30 minutes as of in 15 seconds. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.